Hello and welcome to the Dennis M. Lynch Arena for Rick Hockey Fridays for the 2013-2014 season brought to you by Anchor TV. I'm Jared Ware, joined along with Sam Allen as always as we're set to bring you another fantastic hockey season as the Rick Club men team look to improve on their season last year where they came up a little short of their ultimate goals, but they're here tonight, a division higher than they were last year, taking on Southern New Hampshire. Sam, Give us a little bit of excitement and some energy and your thoughts on this hockey season as we're right on the precipice of game number one of, of many. I think this is going to be a fun season. There's a whole lot of new guys on the team. Granted, they did lose, I think it was, out of the 13 people that got in double-digit points, we only have three of them back. But we, the names that we replaced them with are pretty good names. They're guys who have been around playing hockey for a while and finally decided to let's play some more club hockey at Rick. I'm excited for this season. It should be cool with a whole bunch of different people. Now you talked about it. That entire first line is gone to graduation. Yep. Alex Lyman, Cody Warnock, Seth Tobias. Over 91 points combined between those guys, probably closer to 100 yep. than it was 90. Who are some of the new faces on this squad as the anchormen look to reload? Their entire first line this year is brand new. You have Nate Duquette along with his captain from when they play in high school together, um, Alex Murray. They're back together. And centering them is Andrew Bathgate. He went, went to Assumption freshman year, decided to go play juniors, then came from a junior team in Texas, and now decided to come here and play club hockey. I'm thinking he's going to be a pretty good skater. Now, I mentioned the step up in division. We didn't see the Southern New Hampshire no. team last year, and looking at the schedule, there are some perennial powers. Providence yeah. College is on the schedule this year. Harvard is on the schedule. Now, you're not playing the number five ranked Friars no. in Division One hockey, but their club team can play with some of the best. What, what okay. do you think about this step up in divisions? I think it's going to be hard for them to adjust to. It's They're going to be faster paced. Yeah, they, Rick has some speed, but it's going to be a whole different level of game. They've played a few teams over the years that are in this division, but not every single game all the time. So I definitely think it's going to be a little bit hard of an adjustment. Maybe after the first few games, they'll know how to adjust better to the faster pace, quicker moving, better scoring teams. Well, it's a new team, new lines, new defensive pairing, new division, but it's the same Rick Hockey Fridays here on Anchor TV. We'll be back with the introduction of our starting lineups and the national anthems here on Anchor TV. Rick Hockey Fridays back inside the Dennis M. Lynch Arena. We're about to send it to ice level so you can get the PA's announcement of the starting lineups and we'll bring you the national anthem as we get you ready for the Rhode Island College Anchorman, the start to their season as they take on the traveling Southern New Hampshire Penman. So let's send it down ice level. We'll turn up our effects mic and we'll let you know who's on the ice.
So we'll just bring you those starting lineups once again. Not always the best audio from the PA announcer, but on the ice first for the anchorman will be their first line comprised of Ricky Pannone, Zach Cordero, who's a, no, a new name for you at home, and one of the captains, Brian Luther. The defensive pairing on the ice will be uh, excuse me, Mike Martinelli and Brett Mora, another one of the captains for the Anchorman. And for Southern New Hampshire on the ice is number three, Andrew Anastos. This is their forward line. So it's Anastos, number 17, Mike Walsh, and number 19, Paul Perozo. And their defensive pairing out on the ice first, number 23, Mike Ferreira, and number 12, Kale Miata. So those are your 10 on the ice between the sticks. Number one, Vinny Tadino. Looking at some of his stats from last year, a 14-2-1 record, 2.21 goals against, and he had three shutouts in 19 games. He allowed 41 goals and made a staggering 416 saves. He was tremendous last season. And the netminder for the Penman, number one, Andrew Keegan. So we got our boys on the ice, and as always, we're going to get a score and a prediction from Sam Allen. Usually, she's nowhere near the actual score, but we'll find out what she's got tonight. Sam, quick. I think it's going to be really close, and honestly, I'm going to have to say the Anchorman might lose tonight. I'm sorry. Oh, boy. She's I'm not sorry, throwing guys. up. The, oh, man. All right, so here we go. The puck's dropped, and we're ready to go. Ready to go as Pannone took a shot from Anastos right at the blue line, and the Penmen are settling into things and moving forwards. That was a wild pass in the direction of Perozo. It found the stick of Martinelli and now the penmen are breaking. Shot comes in and that's blocked away by Tadino. It came off the stick of Ferreira, the defenseman, found his way into the attacking zone. The anchorman looking to break forward. This is Luther, one of two captains on this squad. Shot from the far wing. That was Ricky Pannone who's found his way onto the first line this season. We saw a little bit of a contribution from Pannone and we saw his first career goal. That was on Rick Hockey Friday last year. There's a chance for the penman that at the awesome. back post. That was Mike Walsh who couldn't prod home. Tadino had to be alert. A great opportunity within the yeah. first minute. We've always seen a lot of action on these televised games. We've seen goals okay. in the first few minutes and we almost saw Mike Walsh open his account. In the circle now is Kevin Peduto. That'll be for the penman. He wins it, gives it back. Shot comes in from the point. That was Kevin Miner. Only found the chest of Tadino. The anchormen are under some pressure in the early stages of this game inside the Lynch Arena. Looking to find their feet with a bunch of new guys. Nearly a loss of possession, and it was. That puck just gets thrown forward by Nathan Nathaniel Duquette. It's another new name for you at home. Penmen are trapped in. That ball, I mean, that puck, excuse me, moved forward by Huber. We saw Ryan Huber play a lot for this anchorman squad last year and nearly breaking away on that left wing was Ryan Houston. Puck on the left wing, Butler has it. Butler in front, fires, that was partially blocked, actually nearly fell over the head of Tadino. We saw one of those goals Loose last puck. year in the first game, that's not happening again. Miner with it now, goes forward, tries to find the stick of Houston. Puck all the way to Tadino and he hands it off to number five, Neil Skalabinski, and if you look at the big body of Skalabinski, He's a man for the future. It's got to be around six foot three, six foot four. Physically imposing as that puck is covered up by Tadino, and it's their first stoppage of action. It's been all action here, and the Penmen have looked to settle a little quicker than Rhode Island College has. This is Sean O'Connell taking the face off for the Penmen. He went up against TJ Jack Vaughney. TJ, who we saw behind the, the counter there down at the snack out. bar. He was getting some chicken strips ready, was handing out waters, getting his mouthpiece ready. <laughs> One of the members here at the Dennis M. Lynch Arena. Puck in the corner with the anchorman nearly taken away by Southern New Hampshire. Right at the center circle, this is Luther. Luther takes it down in the corner, has to slow up as the anchorman changed lines. Eventually taken off the puck by Jason Collins. And breaking once again, here comes Southern New Hampshire. This is Ritizano, drops it behind. That's Di Natale. Puck loose behind the net. The anchormen have been under constant pressure here. Shot from the, from the slot. That was saved, the low slot, as that was Ritizano. This team is fast. They're moving well, they're cycling well, and they've been attacking, and they've put a lot of pressure on the anchormen. We're not used to seeing this. Usually no. the anchorman set the tone as Greg Tabana goes in to take that face off against Brian Luther. 
puck high up in the air. Glove down at the point. Shot comes in. That's blocked away. That came off the stick of Mike Ferreira. So the first line of defense back on the ice for Southern New Hampshire. That's a great poke away. Great poke check. Here comes Dabana. His shot. I believe that was saved by Tadino. Dabana working behind the net. And that's taken away by Brett Mora, one of the captains who's going to have to settle his team down. Here comes Pannone. He's trying to get away from Miata. Miata does a great job keeping the puck away from Pannone, and there's a nice check from Cordero, making his presence felt on his debut in the Anchorman Burgundy Golden White. Mora high off the glass, stopped in the neutral zone by Miner. Miner could not get past Andrew Bathgate. We talked about him in the pregame. He's played some junior hockey before this. this is his first season on the Anchorman squad. Tried to pick up the puck, lost out. Coming across is Miner. Off the boards chasing this one down is Alex Murray, wearing the number 14 jersey. Around the boards, here's Duquette. Duquette centers and nearly found the tape of number 13, Andrew Bathgate. That was a great move yeah. by those two. Eerily reminiscent of that first line last year. Cody, Cody Warnock, Alex Lyman, and Seth Tobias. They were on the same wavelength at all times on the ice, and they just had so many intricate passing moves that usually resulted in goals. But it looks like the anchormen are settling down and getting themselves back into this hockey game. I know a couple of the players said they hadn't really heard much about the Southern New Hampshire team, so I'm not surprised it took like five minutes to kind of figure out what they're all about. And we're going to see that a lot this season. As oh, yeah. you mentioned, a bunch of new opponents for the anchormen. So though these opposing teams won't know much about Rhode Island College, but in turn, Rick won't know much about their opponents either. Yep. Not a lot of tape floating around for most of these schools. If any of these other schools want to find out a little something quickly, <laughs> they can hit up blip.tv and grab these off the interweb. Not advising that, but <laughs> if they wanted to, if they do a Google search, I'm sure it'll pop oh up. Yeah. Skating through the neutral zone, this is Luther. He's been on the puck a lot lately, dropped it off for Pannone. Back to Luther behind the net. Pressure put on by Miner. Battling for that up against the boards. That's Ridizano and Luther. Ridizano comes off best. He's breaking down the right wing. Looking to find his teammate who tried to go high and just missed wide. That was Houston. Broke down that left wing. Had a lot of the goal to aim at as Tadino went low. Couldn't direct it on frame. And we're going to have a whistle. Yeah. And this might be our first penalty of the afternoon. Let's see. Yes, that is going to be on Andrew Bathgate. He's going to head to the sin bin for the first time in this game. So the first power play of the afternoon goes to Southern New Hampshire. And they've been in the ascendancy in this one. Will their pressure pay off here as they have the five on four? On the ice for the anchorman, Pannone Cordero. Also have Martinelli and I believe Mora will be on the ice as well for the penalty kill. The faceoff will be between Pannone and Kevin Peduto. Also heading over into the box is number 23, Brandon Hassell. I don't know what he's doing in there. Serving for gotta be, yeah, he's got to be taking one for a teammate. So Southern New Hampshire, the penman on the power play. They move the puck into the corner. Peduto, patient. Here's Miata. Off, they have an open shot off the blocker of Ferreira. Believe, excuse me, off the leg pad of Tadino. Shot came from Ferreira. Houston gives it back to Peduto. Peduto behind Tadino's net. Try to go back up to the point. It was blocked away by Martinelli, but over to come claim that is Butler. Butler in the slot. That's a kick save from Tadino. Another good reflex wow, save by Vinny. Nice. He's been challenged a few times this afternoon. Miata has it, moving it forward for the Penman. Into their attacking zone. Looked into the middle, decided to drop one off to Houston, who fires. It was partially blocked. Tadino could just knock it down. Back up top, here's Peduto. Off the boards in the direction of Houston. Martinelli was there to make a little contact. Ferreira at the point, shovels it forwards. It's going to fall kindly for Miata. Behind the net, Houston. Puts it right in the crease. No one there to prod it home. Tadino had to have his wits about him, and he did. Puck 
down this left wing. In the corner, I believe this is Peduto or Butler had it. Back up top, Ferreira. Right at the center circle and just high over the crossbar with his effort was Peduto. Jack Ronnie can't clear. Captain Ferreira fires, misses wide of Tadino's left-hand post. Peduto goes cross-site shot, comes in from Miata. Martinelli covers up. And we have a whistle. Vinny is on his game today. Vinny Tadino, as we mentioned, who was so phenomenal last season in his first year as the starter for Rhode Island College, has been called into action uh, just oh. a ton of times in the early stages of this ball, uh, this game. We're about eight minutes in, and he's made a bunch of saves, especially on that power play. And it looks like Jack Vonnie will go to the penalty box as well. So it's the five on three. And I think we might be seeing the first goal of the afternoon coming oh, from the penman. We'll see. Have faith. Mike Walsh had it taken away. Covering this one up is Miner. Here comes Walsh, slows up, coming back towards the faceoff circle, tried to find in the middle Anthony Feldman. Feldman with it now. Gives it back behind the net. Perozo tried to poke one in front to Feldman. Feldman comes over into the corner, picks it up, goes cross ice, has a man in a lot of space. That was a Nastos. Mora all over the ice, tracking down this loose puck. Out front, Anastos goes back to the point. Miner into the corner, Walsh. The anchormen cycling around. They have three men on the arc. Now they're back up to four. Nearly a defense splitting pass towards Feldman. Feldman, who's listed out of Hudson. We don't get a, a state on that. Hudson, Massachusetts, he'd be a Hudson High School Hawk. The home of yours truly, and that's oh, the first goal of the season. And I think that is Anthony Feldman, who opens up his account. We're gonna, I'm going to have to call some of my contacts back in the beautiful city of Hudson. It's not a city, it's a town, but Feldman opens up the scoring here, and it's one to nothing. Penman, the pressure finally tells they had the power play. Then they had the two-man advantage at 5-3. to three. The anchormen were doing a great job defending. Had it back to five on four, but not before Feldman from an acute angle with a deflection. Got that one pass to Dino, and now looking to make it two. Oh, oh misconnection there. That was Ridizano. He wow. had it right on the that tape. On wow. And we get another whistle, but quickly the anchormen were under pressure as Dylan Di Natale and Robert Ridizano nearly combined for goal number two. And this contingent of anchormen fans who we have right across the ice. There's a lot of them. Oh, yeah. They're holding their breath right now. They're just looking to hold on. It's still five on four hockey. You know, coming out now, we're back to full strength, five aside. So the anchormen need to find their skates quickly, get themselves back into this game. And now for the first time, they're looking to break out of their own defensive zone. Pannon, so much speed, gets away from the defender. That was Brandon Butler, who I believe he just blew past. No, excuse me, that was number five, Bobby Macera. And now here come the Penman once again. They have the one goal edge. Trying to skate past Nadiger was number 16, Jason Collins. Puck loose right on the red line, diving to try and cover that up. Loose in control was Skalabinski. Oh, O'Connell with it, pressured by Cordero. Pannon saucers one to center ice. No, excuse me, this is Pannon receiving the pass. He's got to get past Macera, and Macera stands strong and puts Pannon on his backside. Now on the near wing, this left side, Di Natale, center ice. O'Connell squeezed off of it, a combination of Jack Voney and Nick Bruno. The anchorman look like they can hang when it's five on five. The difference has been the penalties. Loose puck right at the blue line, Huber. He's put on his backside. Shot came in from the red line and was covered up. And we get another whistle. And it looks that like this is going to be Dylan Di Natale heading to the penalty box. So we've barely been at full strength yeah. in this hockey game so far. 10-20 no, into the first period. The Anchorman have their first power play of the year. 
special teams. You'll hear the coaching staff. I guarantee you they'll come up here during their intermission interviews and tell us about how special teams are so crucial. Yep. You're going to see it right here for the Anchorman. Their penalty kill was good. Let's see what their power play looks like. Ball, excuse me, puck shoveled in by Alex Murray. Defending that there is Miata. He's been on the ice a lot for the Penman. He decides to break forward from defense at center ice. Now slows up. Saucers one in. Tadino blocks it down. Huber. He'll take it over. He'll start the rush. Far wing. Puck on the stick of Alex Murray. Murray gave it away. Shot from the blue line into the chest of Tadino right into that Anchorman logo. That came from Mike Ferreira. So we'll see a face-off here, a line change for the anchorman and Penman. A minute 15 on, left on this power play, the first of the season for the anchorman. We've seen, seen him at full strength. We've seen him down a man. We've seen him down two men. And now we get a chance to see him with the man edge. Face-off won by the anchorman. Down the near wing is Pannone. Tries to knock it around Miata. Miata spins around. Can he get there first? A little bit of contact right on the backboards. That was Jersey Polak who we're seeing for the first time this afternoon. Alex Nadiger on the roster for the first time this season without his brother Mike. Coaching staff have seen a lot of improvement from Alex Nadiger in the offseason and heading into the start of this year. We'll see how that plays out on the ice. Miner backhands it up the boards, poked away from Polak. Peduto has it on the far wing, tries to skate away from Jack Vaughn. He has it in front on his backhand. It was blocked away. Shot comes in and it's covered up by Tadino. Greg Dabana got a shot in there after Tadino put the kick save on Peduto. But you have to give Peduto a lot of credit. Flashed a nice set of hands and some nice skill as he got away from Jack Vaughn. Definitely going to be a different season this year up in this new division. I, mean, I kind of heard we played a few of the teams in years past, PC, they, the guys played a couple times last year, but not full time. This is definitely going to be interesting all year long. Ritazano and Luther in the circle right now. They'll take the face off. You see that C on the chest of Brian Luther, one of two captains, along with Brett Mora, and actually three, Mike Martinelli. I've been shortchanging him all afternoon. Did not say he was a captain at the beginning of the game. It's a tri captain system. Mike will understand. Face off one by the anchorman, looking to break out and make the most of the rest of this power play. They have 23 seconds. They have the puck, taking a shot, saved. That was a shot off the stick of Duquette. Keegan, his first real action of the afternoon. He needed to stand strong, and he did. Duquette looking to open up his account in the anchorman Burgundy Golden White this afternoon. Mora pokes it away. The anchorman still have it. Mora in the corner. Squares up, looks for a teammate. Gets a shot from behind from Feldman. Feldman has the one goal this afternoon for the Penman, and we're back to full strength. Shot comes in, that's blocked, and limping a little bit is Miner as he had to get in the way of that Murray drive from the point. Anchorman keep it in, here's Murray. Drops it off, shot comes in, saved by Keegan. That was once again Duquette taking the shot. It was a tight angle. A save that you would expect from Keegan, Jack Vani. Putting in a defensive shift as he got a poke check in on Andrew Anastos. Huber comes forward, has it on the blue line. Having a hold up was Murray. He would have been offside. Murray's going to go to the anchorman bench as they change up lines. Macera, that poked forward with it now is Walsh. Walsh on the left wing trying to get away from Mar Mar Martinelli. Excuse me. Eventually, it was poked away by Tadino. Anastos, puck is loose in front. Penman keep it, Anastos. Now this is on the wing. Walsh plays it forward. Collins behind the net, has it poked away. Coming back was Daniels. In the corner now with Mike Walsh. The Penman still have it. Macero wants it, doesn't get it. That was an aggressive pass from Walsh. Looking to go cross ice. Kim Pannone gets to this loose puck. He gets there first, tried to square it into the middle. He had Polak crashing the crease. Polak still in front. 
Thought for a moment that puck found the back of the net. It's loose in front. Sticks are flying in. Not sure where that puck is in eventually. The net knocked off its peg, so we'll get a stoppage there, but that's a good attack from the anchorman, Jersey Polak, on the ice with Pannone, and they look pretty good together. Oh, yeah. Definitely thought that puck went in, along with a couple fans, too. Well, sometimes it's hard to see, so I'll react off the crowd <laughs> noise, and we got a yell from the crowd, so I was assuming something went in. It did not. We're still at one nothing. the Penman with the lead. The anchor anchorman, though, starting to find their game a little bit taking this face off is luther for the anchorman he wins it kept in on the sprawl shot comes in that's wide from skalabinski you expect him to have a ferocious slap shot at his size he takes another one there and that's come. saved by keegan you never know if he can hear us up here but right. decided to fire away again the aggressive new player try to bring his body into walsh and you could see walsh flinch a little bit Hard not to when you have Skalabinski bearing down on you. If he gets ahead of steam. Listed at six foot four. And if I was gonna put a weight on him, I would say 220 is fair. Yeah. Someone will correct us if we're wrong. Is that pucks loose in front? Pannone got there first, but couldn't direct his shot on target. Was put under some pressure by Miata. Puck at center ice. Nadiger. Goes forward looking for Pannone, who's been active in this game. One of the more experienced players left on this roster, but here's a lot of space for Houston. He fires Tadino's there. Closed down the angle nicely as Houston found a teammate right on the doorstep, couldn't direct it on target. That was Peduto. Someone lost the stick. Peduto has time to pick it up. Very rarely do you see that. Here's Pannone now at center ice, lost out, gets it right back. Crosses over the blue line, snapping at his heels is Butler. Cross ice, Murray fires low and hard, saved with a kick. And again, Pannone misses wide, but the anchormen have taken more shots in the last five minutes than they had in the first 10 minutes of this period, as we have just over five minutes remaining in this first stanza. The one goal with the man advantage for the penman, it was Anthony Feldman. But the anchormen have been playing better hockey the last couple minutes. That's covered up by Keegan. And we'll get a face off in the anchorman's attacking zone. After that power play, the anchorman's play has really stepped up. Really improved over the last five to seven minutes. You want to see them continue this heading into the first period. There's still a lot of hockey left to go in this. And it looks like tonight we could see a, a good amount of goals. So stick with us through this one. We're at one nothing right now. And Looking to slice through the defense again is Southern New Hampshire. That shot high and wide from Dina Talley. But you've seen Southern New Hampshire counterattack with just lethal precision at times. If the end product was there, the score could be more. That's cleared only to the blue line. Picking that up, Kevin Miner looked to go down low to number 25, Ritizano. The anchorman have to clear it. Polak, he's battling in the corner. Nick Bruno goes forward. Puck still in the Southern New Hampshire zone. Missing his pass. There was number 18, Di Natale. Polak now looking to get his body into Feldman. Still at the blue line of Southern New Hampshire. Now with the back line of the anchorman, the defensive pairing. Looking to find Cordero coming right off the bench was Bruno. And that will be touched up for icing. It was an aggressive pass. I forgot he was there. As Andrew Bathgate pops out of the penalty box. So skating in to take this face off will be Brian Luther as well as Shea Powell. Nope, Shea Powell goes to the wing. Coming in now is Greg DeBana. Luther wins the draw. Puck is loose right in front. Tadino was sprawled out. Another opportunity not able to get there was Powell. He had the entire net to shoot at. Another breathless moment for the anchorman, but they survive. Pannone off his skate, couldn't control. Mora with the puck in his defensive zone. Goes center ice. Cordero knocks it forward. Across to cover up is Macera. Macera over to Powell. Shoveled forward. 
That was Luther. Pannone try to go right behind the net of Keegan. That's Cordero battling with number 16, Jason Collins. And breaking forwards now, here's Dabana. Dabana tries to skill his way past Mora, lost possession of the puck, tracked it down behind the net. Scrum against the boards, down on the ice is Martinelli battling for it. Dabana comes away with it, to the point. This is Collins, wrist shot, made it through all the traffic into the corner. The anchorman clear it forwards to center ice. Collins now had nearly had it poked away by Bathgate, who's been active. It's nearly stolen by Mora. He had a lot of ice in front of him. Center ice moved on by Anastos. Mora. We've seen him play forward that time, so he's adept skating with the puck. Evades a couple of penmen. Shovels it forwards. Bathgate flicks it forwards. It's loose right on the red line. Anastos breaking forwards on the left wing. On his right is Walsh. Anastos taking on Martinelli. Drops it behind. Shot comes in to Tadino and he covers up. That was Paul Perozo, but a great little drop pass by Anastos to find his teammate. I think this year the Anchormen aren't going to be the only hard hitting team. This team today has been hit all over the place. Anchormen are not going to be the most physical. Penman win the draw. This is Polak. It's three on one. Knocks it forwards, tries to skate away from the defense, and he does. Middle of the ice at the faceoff circle, knocked away. Nadiger plays it off the glass behind Keegan's net. Puck at center ice. Skalabinski missed his pass initially, wasn't stolen, shovels one in. Keegan was alert, was probably going wide of his left-hand post, but had to just knock it around. Jack Vonnie putting some pressure on, up against the glass. Puck loose, Skalabinski. Puts his body into Anastos. He drops his stick. Here's Polak in some space at the blue line. Knocks it up and over the head of Miata. Behind the net. Wrap around. Shot saved. Once again saved. It was loose for a moment there. That was Anthony Daniels. Anthony Daniels, who hasn't played organized hockey in a few years, spent some time at CCRI, has transferred into Rhode Island College and joined up with his cousin, the netminder, Vinny Tadino. And he nearly evened things up. Keegan had to make a double save. One minute, 11 seconds in the first period. And I'm excited to hear from the coaches in the yeah. intermission to see what they think about this performance. Because at times, it's been good. At times, a little shaky. You give up those penalties. You put some pressure on your special teams and your penalty kill. That's a puck loose in a lot of ice. Tracking this down, it's Houston. Nearly one-on-one. -on -one. Getting back is Huber. And I think we're going to see a penalty. So Huber, delayed penalty call, who nearly tackled Houston. Southern New Hampshire, they pull their goalie. They have six men on the ice currently, under a minute. That's going to be touched finally by Luther. I thought we were nearly going to see a penalty shot. We have not oh, seen, we seen a penalty one. shot. A judge to have not been a breakaway by Houston, but it was close. So Huber professional foul and yes. instead of allowing Houston to get the shot off exactly. takes one for the it team was very so, good defending, I have to say. so 40 seconds in the period two minutes on the penalty so the penalty will roll over to the second period the last thing the anchormen want to do is give away that second goal with under a minute left in the period let's see how they defend Martinelli cross ice onto the tape of Mora Mora saucers forward Chasing this one down is Cordero. Keegan comes out of his net to get there first. Under 20 seconds left in the period. One last attack. Miner has it forward. This is Peduto. Peduto fires high and wide left. Puck is still loose. Southern New Hampshire has it. Peduto loses out, and that's the end of period number one. And after 20 minutes of hockey, it's Southern New Hampshire one, Rhode Island call it zero. It was Anthony Feldman with the man advantage for the Penman. So we'll step away for just a few moments and Sam Allen will be back with an interview with one of the coaches here on Rick Hockey Fridays brought to you by Anchor TV. Sam Allen here with head coach Chris Gwynn. Chris, this is a very new team for you guys. You lost a lot of big names. 
How did you guys feel going into the season with all the new guys? Uh, we actually had some confidence going in. As, as we got going and the practices started to develop, we started to build a lot of confidence in this team. Uh, it's going to be some work at the beginning of the season, but I do have a lot of confidence that this team can continue with what we've done in the past years. There you go. So you saw your first opponent in your new division now. How do you guys feel? What are you going to try to fix to kind of keep up with the bigger guys? Uh, we're definitely going to have to use our speed. With the size that we have, especially through the second and third line, we're definitely going to have to be a fast puck possession team uh, and use that to advantage. Uh, you can see it in spurts with the guys when they were really starting to turn it up, how the other team had a little bit of trouble because they're trying to play too physical against us. So we were able to create some openings then. But we really it's now it's just timing and gelling and coming together. All right, so I always ask this question before you go back. What are you going to tell the team heading into the next period? You are going to be a man down. Going starting the second, when are you going to tell the guys? Well, our penalty kill has been solid so far, uh, so we'll come out. I have a lot of confidence in that, that we can kill it off. But what we really need to do is focus more on um, possession of the puck, uh, winning the battle through the loose puck. I think that's our biggest disadvantage at this point. All right, well, good luck the rest of the game. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we'll be back with the second period right after this. Back here inside the Dennis M. Lynch Arena, in between periods, we're just about to get started in the second. The Anchorman trailed the Southern New Hampshire Penman one to nothing. Anthony Feldman opened up the scoring in this one, and the Anchorman struggled to acclimate to the new pace set by this new division. But as the period wore on, they looked better and better, and eventually they got themselves to just about even on the ice with the Penman. But at the moment, they're a man down for another minute, minute and 50 seconds. Sam, what did you think about that first half? I definitely think we're not going to be that physical team anymore. It was a very different first half or first period than what we've seen in the past with some teams. We've seen some games last season where the anchormen have just it been in their offensive zone the entire time, and Vinny's just sitting there doing homework. Now Vinny it's Tadino, not that. Vinny Tadino was active in that first period. It could have been two or three, maybe even four for the penman but he was there to shut the door on multiple occasions and there were a few misses from point blank range by the penman so the signs are there that southern new hampshire could blow this game open but you never know the second period the coach able to talk to the anchormen we'll see how they respond they've been good at points they really have as we get the first shot and that's why that came off the stick of miata came off the boards with a whole lot of heat miata tracks it down goes cross ice to his teammate perozo once again, the anchormen are a man down for another minute and 10 seconds. That power play was, I believe, on Ryan Huber as Houston broke away into the open ice. We get a clearing, clock stops, penalty clock stops as well. 109 on the power play. We've seen a shot from Miata that went wide. Face off in the anchorman's attacking zone. Skating in to take it will be Bathgate. He's been active as well for the Anchorman, along with Murray. This has been a good line for the Anchorman. Bathgate, Murray, and uh, I'm not quite Duquette. sure who that third member is. I believe it's Duquette. Duquette, and Duquette as well has been involved, involved in a lot of the action. I think they're Rick's biggest line size-wise, too. They're going to be the physical one. And they seem to be on the same page as slicing through the defense was Perozo took the shot, saved by Tadino, but nearly... A goal there as Perozo showed off some fancy footwork, fancy puck handling, got himself into some space down the left wing. Here comes Bathgate, checks inside, takes a little contact. He has it loose in the slot, fired high and wide. That was Mora. And now it's two on one. Here's Anastos. He's got Walsh with him. Anastos on the backhand. Oh. Martinelli was there to put some pressure on. I believe he got a uh, stick in there. And that really took Anastos off as he had the puck on his backhand, bearing down on Vinny Tadino. Just about 10 seconds left on the power play. Walsh, Ford, Murray covers up that puck, plays it off the boards. Five left on the power play. Hawk lost in the slot. Shot comes in. It was a weak one from Houston. It was nearly a pass almost across the face. Didn't know what he wanted to do with it. Five on five hockey. Here comes Jersey Polak, a freshman. Backhanded shot from the blue line covered up by Keegan. 
We've seen Jersey Polak come into the game more and more. He's a freshman straight out of Lincoln High School, was part of a Rhode Island High School championship team, uh, made second team all division last season, was a captain as well. Top three in scoring for Lincoln all four years of high school. That's impressive stuff from the young Polak. We'll see what he brings to the table for the anchorman as right on cue he plays it off the boards around the back coming over his minor physical battle against the boards and minor wins out down the left wing this is peduto behind the net in front squared and that's gloved down by tadino had to be alert ryan houston right on the doorstep and tadino says no way and you can see houston shaking his head <laughs> didn't make the best of contact with the blade but Tadino was alert. Oh, yeah. So we'll see a line change with this stoppage in action. But once again, Southern New Hampshire has had the better of the exchanges in this second period. Draw one. Anchorman pick it up high off the glass. Nearly found Cordero. Puck still loose at center ice into the Anchorman's attacking zone. Miner is back, covers it up. Lost out for a moment. Coming in is Cordero behind Keegan's net. Ball loose on the, or excuse me, puck loose on the red line. Cross ice pass in the direction of Houston. Houston got it from Peduto, had it poked away. Shoveled forward, I believe that's Bruno. Back with it are the penmen looking to break out. Dump behind, Miner. Pressure put on by Panone. Now with it is Peduto on that far side, goes off the glass. There again is Bruno, cross ice towards Cordero. Can he get there in front of Miner? No. Panone tried to skate away from Peduto, lost possession. This is Feldman, the goal scorer. Now here comes Peduto at center ice, gets away from a defender. Puck is still loose on the red line. Peduto's got to square it up. Goes behind the net, tried to go out to the point. Lurking there was Anthony Hennessy. Feldman shovels it forward so the penman can put some fresh bodies on the ice. Huber looking to find the stick of Duquette who is in behind the defense. Last second intervention by Collins. Knocked the putt into, puck into the netting. So we'll see a face off on the dot. Shot into the chest of Keegan. That was from Murray, covered up by Andrew Keegan. He's only been tested a few times, but he's risen to the occasion. Skidding in to take the face off is Bathgate against Dabana. Anchorman won it momentarily. Put in some four, four check pressure. Puck at center ice. Skalabinski shovels it forward on his backhand, chasing it down his bathgate. Southern New Hampshire has it, lost it, shot from Duquette just wide over the glove of, Mur of Keegan, excuse me, and net. But we've seen this line, Murray, Duquette, Bathgate. Got to really like the look of them yeah. in this first game. Puck is loose at center ice, it's a foot race. Skalabinski will get there first to clean things up. Tadino was on the edge of the crease just in case. Duquette forward, Jack Vani in some space, slows things up, fires a shot, Keegan rebound, covered up by Dubana. Duquette was bearing down, tried to get to that loose puck, couldn't. Around the boards, can he keep it in? No, now going back to chase this down is Nadiger. We'll see a line change for the penman. Nadiger has his stick lifted, puck still loose, fired in, Tadino was alert, it was behind his net. Here's Polak, near wing, looking to the center of the ice. Jack Vonnie has it, has to split a few defenders, kick save. Stick was on it as well from Keegan. Keegan's been tested, though, a lot in this second period. The anchorman starting to grow into this period. Bodied out by Calab Skalabinski, excuse me. He's going to be a great addition yeah. to the defensive ranks for the anchorman. You can already see it. They need a big guy around all the, the smaller height guys on this team. Shot fired in, a cute angle from Dina Talley. Puck still with the penman behind the net. Dina Talley and Mora coming together. Puck still loose. Anchorman have it. Martinelli to Polak. 
Puck at center ice. Here's Miata. Cross ice to Ritizano. Finds the tape of his teammate Di Natale. Mora there once again putting some pressure on Di Natale. Bodies him up. Puck still loose on that far side. It's loose through the slot. Poked away by Polak. He had to be alert. Miata with it once again. Pressured by Cordero. Polak, neutral zone. Dumps it behind. Cordero not able to touch it. He was offside. Puck loose at the dot. Cordero on the turn. Nearly had it. Losing his footing was Panom was looking to pull the trigger on his backhand. Blew a tire. Shot from Miata wide. It was pretty hard, though, from Kale Miata. Yeah. Dropped off in the direction of Feldman. He's already got one on the season. Puck loose right around the faceoff circle. Knocked forward in a lot of ice. Here's Bathgate. What can he do with it? On to his right side, there and he opens go. up his Ankerman account. Thought he was going to lose his skate for a second. Stayed upright, brought it onto his favored side, and fired past Keegan. And all of a sudden, we're knotted up at one apiece. It's Andrew Bathgate, and we may see maybe a second coming of that. We saw Lyman, Warnock, Tobias it last year. Be. A lot of the I good like things it. in attack have come from Bathgate, Murray, and Duquette, and Andrew Bathgate gets the goal that so well deserved, was in all kinds of space. Let's take a look at the Anchorman's first goal of the season. Puck down in the corner. There's Action has restarted. There's Loose Bathgate right in front. Never a doubt. Nope. 13-12 left in the second period. There were question marks about how would the anchorman was respond. Early stages, the early exchanges of the second period looked like Southern New Hampshire was really going to take control of this one, but the anchorman oh. resilient, experienced, a great program with a great coaching staff. They've got things figured out. So Anastos picks it up on the near side. Sam, go ahead. You see it with most teams. Once they get that one goal, they're just going to come out stronger, harder, because they want to get more goals once they get on the board once. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen now. Anastos in the corner. Goes back up top. Feldman, Rister, wide. Puck covered up behind. I believe it went in actually to the netting behind the net. That first line for Southern New Hampshire was on the ice there. Haven't seen much from them, that combination of walls. Perozo and Anastos. But it looks like we may see they didn't start the game as the first line, Bathgate, Murray, Duquette. I think it'll be a while before they would establish themselves as a potential first line. Mm -hmm. Don't want to change things up too early, but a lot of firepower between those guys. And it helps that Nate Duquette and Alex Murray have been playing together for so long, too. I think that only helps with Bathgate speed. It's going to be phenomenal. As you mentioned, Duquette. Another graduate of Lincoln High School, team captain, along with his line mate, Alex Murray. They led the league in all offensive categories, did Duquette. Uh, he spent some time at Western Connecticut State uh, in 2010. They also compete in the ACHA. So those guys know each other from their high school days. Lincoln High School, <laughs> the home of the S Samantha Allen family. <laughs> Sam, though, decided to go the prep school route. Not really prep no, school. Catholic school. Catholic school. That's a lot worse. <laughs> Puck was with Peduto, had a shot blocked by the defender, Nadiger. Shot partially deflected, having to be alert was Tadino. That came from number six, Brandon Butler from the high slot. With it now is Skalabinski. Just got to clear that one. It's kept in the Penman's attacking zone. Giving chase now is Butler. Butler with it. So we've nearly seen both of our hometowns actually involved in this game. Right. Feldman from Hudson, New Hampshire, <laughs> nope, after yet. some research. Not Hudson High School. Hudson High, 2010 Massachusetts. No, 2012, excuse me, Massachusetts State Champions in Division Three. 2010, they were <laughs> semifinalists in that competition, losing to Longmeadow. Not a lot of those guys go on to play college hockey, though, at all. Most of those guys are done after they spend their time with Mike Nenardowicz. Yeah, we don't want to get into a discussion about high school hockey with me. Pens spends his days, Mr. Nenardowicz, as the anatomy teacher, the man who created the nickname Warehouse. Really? Yes, M Michael Nenardowicz, my sophomore year. Nice. This is all stuff that the viewers at home Have no, no. love. Yeah. They oh don't yeah. know what's they going on, but they chat. love it. Yeah, my high school, we kind of won a lot of state championships. I can't really name them all. There's kind of like 30 of them. 
There's also like 15 schools in all of Rhode Island, so let's remember <laughs> that. Massachusetts, <laughs> Got a little, uh, big and bold. Don't be dis don't diss Mount St. Charles Academy. Oh, a little oh. contact there. Kind of like that <laughs> feisty nymph from Bathgate. Put a stick right into the shin of Ritizano. Mora fires. That was blocked down by Di Natale. Puck loose right at the blue line. It's into the neutral zone. Mora has his stick held up. With it now is Bathgate. Drops it off for Bruno. Bruno, wrist shot from the point. That was blocked away. Only as far as Murray now. Cross ice to Huber. Into the corner. Skating now up top with it was Luther. Luther with it again. Nearly lost his footing. Regains possession. Mora with it. We have a power play here for the anchorman. Lost in all that action. Puck cleared by the penman. Tadino will come out of his crease to handle. Leaves it for Huber. Now the anchorman will break out from behind of Tadino's net. Huber goes wide. Puck was loose. Again, able to clear is Southern New Hampshire. There's 58 seconds left on the power play. Once again, Huber th slows things up. Now decides to go. Skates away from Ritizano. Gave him the one-two shoulder shrug and got away. Here's Mora into the slot. Fires glove side. Deflected off the top of Keegan's glove and over. Anchorman still with it on the far side. Here's Bathgate, kicks it onto his tape. Up top, Huber fires wide off the high glass. Mora skating with it. He lost his footing. It might be the ice out there. Not sure. Murray tried to slice through the defense, had it poked away. Kept in by Duquette on his knees. Into center ice, backhanded clear. So 10 seconds left on the power play. It looks like it will be a kill for Southern New Hampshire. Ready to pop out of the box is Sean O'Connell, and he's out, so we're back to full strength. One apiece, Anthony Feldman scored in the first period. The second period goal was from Bathgate for the anchorman, and we're at ones. Now coming forward is Duquette. Tries to check inside, lost possession. Coming forward is Southern New Hampshire. They have a numbers advantage. Kenny yeah. sliding across was Nadiger. That's a great defensive stop. Feldman. Pressure was put on by Nadiger once again. Shot off the post or off part of the net. I don't think it was fully off the post, but it rattled the metal. That came from Feldman. Duquette chasing a loose puck, has it, fires, had a block, gets it back. That's another save by Keegan. He's been the more active of the two goalies this second period thus far. Breaking forward. Loose puck giving chase to that one is Powell. Nadiger gets there first, goes to his line mate or his defensive partner, Bruno. Right at the red center red line. Neutral zone battle shoveled forward off the back glass. And covering that one up is Miner for icing. Much better second period from the anchor men. Oh yeah. They got their goal. I guess coach's little pep talk before work. You know, and he mentioned in the power play or their penalty kill was good. And the, you, had, you saw them use that in the the first minute of the second period, they had to stave off that power play. They did. They came back, grew in stature, grew in confidence, got their goal. And this thing is even Stevens at this point, maybe a slight edge to the anchorman over the last 10 minutes or so. Puck dropped behind with it now. Anastos loose in front, trying to keep it in, was a lunging Jason Collins, unable to keep things in their attacking zone. Puck loose at center ice. Can Panone get in? He does, couldn't get away from Macera. Panone and Macera still going after it. Scrum on the boards. Coming in is Anastos from the backside. Macera finally takes possession of the puck. He's leading the charge. Goes cross ice just too far ahead of Walsh. Martinelli, Martinelli will get there first. Put into the boards though by Walsh. Had to pay the price. Martinelli pops right back up, gets it off to Luther. Luther at the center circle had Pannone in a lot of ice on the left wing. Was knocked down by a defender, I believe. That was Collins who made the contact. Big hit behind. That was Perozo. 
Laid out in Anchorman. Interception right at center ice. Shoveled four to Dino. He decides to cover that loose puck up. 641. And there's a little bit of contact from Anastos on Tadino after he covered it up. And it looks like Anastos yeah. is going to have to go to the sin bin. That's a mental mistake yep. by Andrew Anastos. Tadino had covered it for a few seconds. The last thing you want to do is go down once again, a man. Give the uh, another opportunity for the Anchorman power play, but that's exactly what Anastos does, and that's a mental blunder. Taps the glass of the penalty box with his stick. So the Anchorman on the power play for two minutes. Puck nearly knocked out of midair by Bathgate. Get a whistle, still power play for the Anchorman. Skating down to take it, I believe it's Nathgate, or Bathgate, excuse me. Kevin Peduto skates in to take the draw. Mora with it, circles behind his net, slows up, starts the attack, gets away from Peduto. Pass wide to Bathgate in some space. Huber was really breaking forward towards the net, wasn't seen. Bathgate battling behind. Off the glass to Peduto. That pass came from Miata. Miata with it now. Two on one. Here's Peduto. Goes high off the post. Nearly a shorthanded goal for Southern New Hampshire. Their counterattacks have been lethal. Putting the brakes on is Murray in the corner. Back up to the point, Huber. Off the glass, back to Murray. Murray, backhand pass to Huber, keeps it in right on the line. Down low, here's Bathgate, fires off the post of his own, off the outside of the post. Bathgate, slows up, cross ice feed, shot, low, hard, save. That was Duquette who took it. Keegan with another save, under a minute left on this power play for the anchormen. Nearly a short-handed goal from Kevin Peduto. With it now, Huber breaking forward, right wing. Takes it into the corner, trying to get away from Feldman. Puck loose behind. Polak tried to sneak in and get it. Finally does. Had it poked away smartly by Miner. Backdoor pass to Polak in the corner. Fires one across the face of goal. Unable to get a stick on it was Huber. Polak spins and fires, and that's blocked away by Miner. Believe it went off the roof. Six seconds left on the power play. Still in the box is Anastos. Great helmets from Southern New Hampshire. They have Penman logoed or decaled on there. It's a good look. Puck at the point. This is Nadiger battling chest to chest. That was with Dina Talley. Feldman plays it off the boards forward, chasing this one down. Will be O'Connell. Covered up for icing. 426 left in the second period. One apiece. Rick Hockey Fridays on Anchor TV. Jared Ware, Sam Allen bringing you through all the action. One of the best teams, though, behind the camera in maybe the country in all of club hockey, no doubt. So we have the great people at Anchor TV here. They do a great job. Panone battling in the corner, body to body with Miner. Feldman has it behind in the corner, spins away from Bruno. Spun away from Luther, excuse me. Luther now has it. Two on two, lost possession of the puck. It went all the way to Keegan. He clears. In some space now is 22 O'Connell. He's put on his backside by a challenge from behind by Cordero. Puck in the middle to O'Connell. Shot was charged down by the Anchorman defense. Bruno with it, pokes it forwards towards Cordero. We're going to have a delayed call, I believe. Yeah. And I think we're going to see O'Connell go back to the penalty box. This is the second penalty he's picked up. And the Penmen are shooting themselves in the foot in the yeah. second period. 
But the anchorman yet to take advantage of any of these penalties. They got the goal. That was five on five. I think it's only a matter of time. Last time we saw them, our power play out, it, they were phenomenal. They had a lot of shots on net. It's only a matter of time before one of them gets in. Momentum has nearly almost completely flipped back to the anchorman in yeah. this game, playing much better than Se Southern New Hampshire in the second period. And I think this is a message to the rest of the division that we're Rick here is play. here to play. Puck loose right at center ice, kicked forwards. Murray drops it behind for Mora. One of the captains on the squad slows things up, passes it towards Murray. Charging over was Debana. Murray under some pressure gets away from the defender. It's three on one. Here's Murray, fires and coming across to get a stick on the drive was Collins. Murray had a few teammates with him, decided to go at it alone. Good defense by Colin, Collins and the penman. Taking this face off will be Peduto as well as Bathgate. Bathgate for the anchorman, Peduto for the penman. Very rarely do you see the human mascot versus human mascot. Penman, anchorman, advantage probably the anchorman. More of a grittier profession. Bathgate fires, that's blocked by Collins. Up against the board, Murray has it, prods it forward, Bathgate moves it along towards Duquette. Collins is there defensively, tries to clear it. M Huber unable to glove that one down at the blue line. Murray has to go all the way back. Under 60 seconds left on this power play, and you have to say the penalty kill so far for the Penman has been phenomenal. Murray with it, nearly lost it to Peduto. Mora was there. Bathgate has it just outside the Anchorman's attacking zone. Murray spins back, nearly had it stolen by Peduto, who's been active, skating hard on the penalty kill. Gotta love his effort. 30 seconds on the power play left for the Anchorman. Murray forward to Mora. Mora goes into the middle. This is Bathgate, tries to get away from the defender, does for a moment, but the angle became too acute to fire a shot on Keegan. Pass in front, Pannon all the way to Keegan, it's still loose in the oh, crease. Goodness. Bathgate has it, fires through a crowd, knocked over high. Six seconds on the power play, shot comes in, it's wide. Two, one, and that's it. O'Connell comes out, we're back on five apiece. That's stolen away. O'Connell's out front. One-on-one -on -one with Tadino. Shot. Save. Tadino. Wide. Blocker wide. Oh. Vinny Tadino called into action, and I think we're going to get a boarding call there on the anchor men. Walsh is down. Walsh laid on that pass for O'Connell. Took a shot. It's a little Jersey Polak. They're going to say that was Polak. That's a good good call. That's a straight player safety call. Those yep. can get really dangerous with a guy facing the boards, gets a shot from behind. You see that all the time. Some guys, uh, they, they don't get up from those too quickly. So right <laughs> right out of the, penal, of the power play, the anchorman go on the penalty kill. And that's a... A big one-on-one -on -one save, though, by Tadino. That can't be overlooked. O'Connell came right out of the penalty box, was way ahead of the play. Walsh fed him, and Vinny Tadino comes up large and in charge oh, yeah. once again. Shot from the blue line, covered up by Tadino between his legs. Stays on top of it, 149 left on the power play, just 113 left on the period. So once again, we'll see a, penal or a power play carry over for the penman. We've seen the Penman's penalty kill. We saw the Anchorman's pen penalty kill earlier in the first period. Let's see what they do here. Corner, this is Walsh, skates right to the face off dot. Gives it off in front, Walsh. Partially blocked, partially saved, goes off the roof. First line on the ice. For the penman, Walsh, Perozo, and now in the circle. This is Anastos. Penman win the draw. Perozo tried to skate in towards the slot. Lost out. Pannon. Saucers one forward all the way to Keegan. 50 seconds left in the period. 120 
on the power play. Penman are on it. Coming forward is Ferreira. Goes to Walsh, and that's backhanded clear by Bathgate. Keegan has to come out, get a stick on it. Bathgate putting pressure on Miata. Gloved down. Here's Perozo. Shot. Glove Glove save. save. Was a real tough angle for Anastos, but as the left-hander tried to flick it in, Tadino again was there. We've seen a lot of opportunities right on the doorstep. And then Tadino, I think Tadino had some words for Anastos because we saw the gesture. (laughs) Tadino, though, you made the save. You can say whatever you want. That's on you, Anastos. Shot comes in. High slot. That was a drive from Miner. Miner with it again. Fires off of Tadino, who's out of his crease. Puck on the wing. Seven seconds left in the period. Puck loose in the corner. Martinelli's there. Tries to clear it off the glass. Miner. It's got a fire. One second off of Tadino, and that's it. After two and 40 minutes of hockey, we're back to square one. Not it up at ones. It's Southern New Hampshire. The Penmen coming down to Rhode Island to take on the Rhode Island College Anchorman. Honors even after two periods. We'll head to a third here on Rick Hockey Fridays. Brought to you by Anchor TV. Stick around as Sam Allen will have your intermission report with one of the coaches from the Anchorman staff. Sam Allen here with assistant coach Anthony Calcione. Cal, we saw a lot of action from the special teams in this game, especially in the second period. How would you guys kind of go about figuring out who's going to play what, who gets penalty kills, all that kind of stuff, especially with so many new guys? Well, it's a little bit tough because we've only had two and a half weeks of practice. So, and not a lot of guys back this year that played on lines together last year. Yep. So it was a lot of mixing and matching, trying to see what works. Once we realized that they're a little bit weaker when they're getting hit, uh, started putting bigger bodies out there together, especially on the sp- uh, special teams, trying to draw a second penalty out there. Small skilled guys picked it up that period. A lot of freshmen first periods were kind of iffy uh, with the jitters and everything. But uh, once we got on the power play, everyone got to settle down. You get to slow the game down. You played at your tempo, and then you just go from there. How do you feel that Vinny has been playing? I mean, it, he's seen sh- so many shots, and they only have one. Yeah, it's funny, too, because the one that went in is probably the only one he should have stopped. <laughs> Every other one looks like a surefire goal. But, um, no, nah, Vinny's just unbelievable. I mean, we bust on him till no end. It's a little long-known that he is, but he battles every single game. He's kept us in game after game, and that's why he's got the A on his jersey. All right, like I end all of my interviews, how are you guys? What are you going to go tell the team when you go back down there to get them into that last period, get at least one more goal, not allow New Ham- Southern New Hampshire to get the goal and get the win? This is our only one-game weekend of the year, so you skate like you're not playing again after today. That's all I'm going to say. There we go. I like it. All right, there you have it. We'll be right back with the last period with more Rick Hockey Fridays. Back here for the start of the third period on Rick Hockey Fridays, and we're knotted up at one apiece after the anchorman picked up the tying goal through the form of Andrew Bathgate. He responded to Anthony Feldman's first period goal, so we head to the last 20 minutes with it all on the line. It's all the play for, and this thing is about as dead even as you can get after that first period where it looked like Southern New Hampshire was more comfortable with the tempo of the game in the second. The anchorman raised their game, came back into it, got themselves into it, and this third is anybody's to win. I'm excited to see this third period. I think both teams are going to come out strong, and it's going to be an amazing period. Yeah, I really think this could go either way. Both teams look very good. Their special teams look great. Both penalty kills have been on tonight. I think it may come down to whose power play opens up a little more. We saw that power play goal from uh, Southern New Hampshire, but that was after a initial power play. Then it went to five on three. Back to five on four, they were able to get that goal. Uh, So it was really a sloppy period for Rhode Island College, that short uh, five-minute span that Southern New Hampshire got their goal. Rhode Island College had a few opportunities on the power play, unable to convert. So it's going to come down uh, to – I think it's going to come down to special teams. I I can really feel it. This third period has some goals in it, so we'll see who gets them. Refs talking things over. I think that's Anastos having a word. 
with maybe the Falk brothers yeah, really. refing together. Just have an issue with the scoreboard right now. They have to run down another 30 seconds. Not just new, uh, not just new players on the ice, new guys in the scorer's booth, and they're struggling with the clock. So we have about 30 seconds <laughs> where we'll talk things over, I believe. They're still waiting for it. I've worked that clock before. It is not an easy clock to work. It's awful. Those scoreboards never are, and you have all sorts of different panels and areas that you have to keep track of. But one that we should know about, there's 40 Six seconds left on the penalty clock. That just started running. I'm not sure if anyone caught that. They're going to talk yeah. that over, actually. They'll reset that. I believe it was at 46 seconds. The anchorman will start this, pe this period on the penalty kill. They're not going to play around with it. The refs have it in their head that gonna, the penalty is going to go on for 10 more seconds after that clock runs out. So here we go. And Astos has it, shovels it forward. Martinelli covers it up behind Tadino's net out to the point. Southern New Hampshire just keeps it in. High slot Walsh had it knocked away by Bathgate. Bathgate. Walsh through the center circle. Slicing through the defense. Stick handles away. Fires a shot. Tadino made himself big. Good bit of handling from Walsh and a better save from Tadino. Point. Looking for the cross ice pass down low to Perozo. Puck up top, the penalty over. Back to five on five. Walsh in the corner. Here we go. Game on the line. We got 19 minutes. Mora cross ice finds the stick of Murray. Murray, it's one on two as the defense was back for the penman. Duquette slashed in, and that puck got stuck up in the netting. So we'll go to the dot in the neutral zone. Ref needs a new puck. Gets it. Actually, we'll just go to the face-off circle in the Anchorman's attacking zone. Luther will take it. In there with the Miss Peduto, who was denied by Tadino excellently earlier oh, yeah. in this game. We also saw a big save from Tadino from a shot from a good angle by Anastos. Anastos didn't like the chirping from Tadino after that. Panone has it, neutral zone. Brings it into the Anchorman's attacking zone. Bruno wanted it. Luther oh. got it into the chest of Keegan, and he covers up. You could hear Nick Bruno on the far wing tapping the ice. That means he wanted the puck, didn't get the feed. Shot came from Luther in the slot, covered. Face off one by Luther. Here's Bruno. Rister flicks it, took a couple deflections. Keegan was unsighted, missed wide. Chasing down the puck, going back is Bruno. Huber's with him. Huber off the boards. It was a loose pass, wraparound shot, saved. I think that was Houston nice. who had his effort. Feldman right in the neutral zone, turnover. Huber breaking forwards on the left wing. Bit of contact there from Peduto on Huber. Peduto comes away with the puck, has Houston in front of him, gets the pass away. Houston, he's got a one on two. The anchorman defense is back. Backhanded pass from Feldman, intercepted. At the point, Miner pokes it forwards around the back. That's poked along, though, by Bruno. At the point, Rister snagged out of midair by Tadino with the glove. It came from O'Connell. And we're going to see mass line change. Polak. Has a word with the score. I'm not sure what that's about. Hmm. Polak back in position. Nadiger off the backboards. Macera forwards. That's kicked away from the goal by Nadiger. Polak now far side. Has his head up looking for the stick of Daniels. Couldn't find him. Macera is there. Behind his back, Macera pass kept in by Nadiger. Big hit by Polak. Polak, not a big body in front. There Jack Bonnie takes Bonnie. the lead. Oh. Loose puck in the slot. And he found right underneath the blocker of Keegan some open net. And he hit it. TJ Jack Vaughn. We saw him earlier <laughs> behind the snack bar. As we said, he's got one more trick in his book. Not only 
Can he hand out waters, cook chicken <laughs> wings, clean the ice? But he can score goals as well when he's out there. And it's 2-1 to one, Rhode Island College. Let's take a look at the replay. Puck just squirms away from the defense Beautiful. of Southern New Hampshire. And Jack Vonnie is Jack Vonnie on the spot, pokes it home. Puck through the neutral zone behind Tadino's net. That's going to be icing on Southern New Hampshire. So there was at least one goal in this third period. Is there more? TJ Jack vaughn has got one. The Penman, who you would think after the first period really felt like they'd be leaving the Dennis M. Lynch Arena with win number one on their season. Now they're staring down the barrel, but there's 17 minutes left in this hockey game. A lot of action left. Bathgate cross ice pass intercepted, breaking forwards. Ridizano. Stick handling in front, firing off the backhand shot. That's covered. That was Di Natale, who was denied by Tadino, who was on his back to make that save. And you can see Di Natale right at center ice. He doesn't know what it's going to take to beat Vinny Tadino tonight. And I think the Penman right now are demoralized. It's really tough to come up against a guy like Tadino who's been so hot between the net. Leaves you wondering, what does it take to get a goal? As Coach Calcione mentioned in that intermission, inter, uh, intermission report, the goal that went in, it really wasn't clean. Uh, Tadino could have saved cross ice down low. It was Powell who was on the back post, didn't get the pass. Murray looking to burst past the defender, squares in front, oh, shot man. saved from Bathgate. He was looking for a second of the night. Kicked away by Keegan. Loose puck. Here's Powell. Has a man on his right. Keeney poked away from behind. Powell fires one in. Covered up by Tadino. Still loose to Bonna. Getting down on the ice is Mora. Shot fired in. Misses wide. That was Ferreira. And that's another shot knocked up high into the netting from Miata. Quick, nervy moment there as the Penmen look to respond. Anchorman defense in Tadino once again stood firm. First line on the ice for both squads. Luther wins the draw again. His face-off win percentage has got to be really high up right now. Into the slot, Walsh had it taken away by Pannone. No, excuse me, that was Cordero who got across. Good defensive shift this afternoon from the rookie Cordero, and that puck is deflected up into the high netting as Luther was looking to slice through the defense. Love the back check pressure, though, from Cordero. He's been great all over the ice. Got to do the little things to get on the ice for the anchorman. Cordero's been doing it. Pannone has it up against the glass, has it taken away. Perozo centers it to Walsh. Walsh skates through the neutral zone, slows up at the point, drops one off. There's a ton of space. A man's in front on the ice. That was Huber getting in the way. Really made it difficult for, I think that was Perozo to pull the trigger. Anastos loses, pos loses possession. Panone's over there battling against the boards. Here's Perozo again. Tried to reverse ice, lost out to Huber. Walsh puts the pressure on, shot fired in from Miner, kicked away. It was a long rebound from Tadino. Loose up against the boards. Anastos leaves it in front for Perozo, poked away by Tadino at the last minute. Anchorman want to get the puck out of their defensive zone, and they do. They get it to center ice. Here's Miner. Miner really skates good forward. Defensive plays by the Anchorman. Dropped in front, Perozo. The pressure was put on from behind by the goal scorer, Jack Vonnie. Have to give him credit. Perozo was trying to pull the pr trigger in front. Anastos had a shot blocked. Still, Tadino's oh there, covers God. it up with the glove. No, it's still loose. A lot of goal mouth action right now. Where's the puck? It's behind the net. Little pushing and shoving. The refs come skating in, but Southern wow. New Hampshire really pressing for that goal. They've had some opportunities, unable to convert. They're trying their hardest to get the puck past Vinny and it's just not going to happen. Have to like the pressure that's been put on by the anchorman really putting off the penman who've been in good position to take shots but there's nope. been a defender there just exactly. nibbling at their ankles, hassling them, harrying them, making it difficult to pull that final trigger and it's paid off as 
Nielsk Nielsk <laughs> I had it had it down and lost it. Skalabinski. <laughs> no relation to Scalabrini. Scalabinski <laughs> had a word with Tadino. He clears it for the anchorman. Can Murray get there in the back door behind the defense on his knees? Leaves it. Shot by Duquette. Oh and it gets God, in that there. Awesome. That's a goal. Five hole by Duquette. Three to one. Effort and toughness from Murray, who was battling with, I believe that was Houston. Wow. Murray won it, dropped the puck off for Duquette, shot came in. Murray was on his knees, actually got pushed yeah. into Keegan, and it went through the five hole. Let's see if we can get another look. All the credit in the world to Alex Murray, who was tremendous. So it came off a faceoff win. Skalabinski clears into open ice. Murray comes flying back, needs to beat a man and does, loses his footing, and eventually the shot goes in from Duquette. It's three to one. The anchorman, new season, new team, new division. Looks like it may be the same result. Cross ice fine. Duquette had to shovel it forward. Couldn't get the puck from underneath the skates. Big hit by Murray down on that near side. Scalab Scalabinski. <laughs> Coming forward with it is Duquette. The two on one. The defense is back. Puck into the glove of Keegan. Knocks the net off the pegs. Duquette's down on the ice. He'll be all right. Yeah. A little pushing and shoving, extracurricular activity. <laughs> Guys having a word, and they're not talking about their course load this semester. A little more volatile down there. Refs are having a word with some of the players right now, talking things over. They don't want the game to get too out of hand with too much pushing and shoving with only a little under 14 minutes left in the game. They don't want to be given out five penalties at this point in the game. At this point, if you're the anchorman, there's enough time in this game where you can't fully shut it down and go in a full defensive yep. shell. Got to keep playing, but you have to be cautious. No need to commit too many men forward and leave yourself open in the back door. But to Dino... And he's been excellent this afternoon. He, he's been the player of the game for me. Even though Jack vonnie has got a goal, Duquette's got a goal, Bathgate's got a goal, Tadino has just been immense. And we saw him in the pregame walking around on his skates, had those big pads on the tombstones, as we called them last year. He was ready to go. And he's been just tremendous. I congratulated him in between periods on that nice save he had to end the second. And he was had a big smile on his face. He knows he's having a great game. He knows he's starting off this season. I think, no, it's not his last season. He has one more year left, but he's starting out this season amazing. I think we have a broken visor on one of the refs. It looks like he was sporting a black eye as well, too. Let's see if we can get a good look. He's right underneath us right now. Didn't look up. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. <laughs> Who says these guys aren't part of the action, the right. Zebras? They're right in the heart of it. And they've done a great job tonight in this game. Mora with it now in the defensive zone, plays it into the neutral zone. Polak, he's tangling up with Ferreira. Puck was under the feet of Daniels. Polak, again, not afraid to get himself in there with Ferreira, throwing his body around. Jack Vaughn, has it in the corner, leaves it off for Polak. Polak and Ferreira again. Neither of those guys are going for the puck. They wanted to go <laughs> shoulder to shoulder. I'm surprised at how physical of a player Polak is. Pol I really am. Polak's one, like one of those small, tough breed of dogs that you see. They think they're a lot bigger. They think they're a bull mastiff. Polak, he's got that mentality. Puck covered up by Tadino. Tadino's going to take it on himself to put the net, net back on the pegs. Got to like the performances of some of these new guys. Jersey oh, yeah. Polak has looked good. Zach Cordero's looked good. Bathgate has a goal. Duquette has a goal. Murray, that line, as I mentioned, Bathgate, Murray, Duquette paying dividends. And it was a veteran, Jack Vonnie, who got the one in the middle. Powell dumps it off for Miner, has it poked away. Into a bunch of open ice is Daniels. Can he open his account tonight? Fires yeah, and scores. Does. It's four to one. Southern Rick just New took this period and kind of just skated away with it. Southern New Hampshire looks and it feels like they've been sucker punched for a lot of this game. They were in control 
didn't take their chances. And Powell, he's having a confab with Miner saying, oh, we got to be better than that on the puck. Great solo goal by Anthony Daniels, a confident young man. And he has a word with Coach Calcione, and they go way back together. Coach Calcione has known Anthony Daniels since he was a young lad and sees the goal there in the Anchorman colors, and it's 4-1, to one, and this game is all but done and dusted. It's just a matter of running out this, these last 12 minutes. And this is a statement for the rest of this new division, the Anchorman are ready yeah. to play in their next game though against Providence College and that That's is a tough, tough contest. We'll have to see maybe we can get our cameras into that new beautiful facility on the campus of Providence College as the shot comes in by Nastos five hole goal. The penmen respond quickly. Andrew Anastos slap shot from the slot between Tadino's legs and about 30 seconds after the goal from Daniels, the Penman respond. It's still four to two, two goal lead, the most dangerous <laughs> lead in hockey. We've had this discussion. <laughs> but I think a lot of Anchorman fans will be all right to have a lead at this point and four goals in their first game of the season. Puck again, loose Anastos from the same spot he scored, holds it, fires high and wide. And if that would have gone in, then all of a sudden, my proclamation of this game being over well, you can't, would have been Bruins erroneous. We're down 4-1 to one in that game against Toronto. We all remember that game seven. So 4-1 to one isn't that wide of a margin anymore. Skating with it is Duquette. He's got three yellow shirts around him. Eventually lost the puck. Feldman, he's skating with it in his defensive zone. Gets it to Miner. So we've got 11 minutes. Things got more interesting. Perozo skates in front. Puck is loose. Tadino covers and calms things down. As we mentioned, if you're the anchorman, you can't sit back for the rest of this game. You have to keep playing. There's a lot of time left on the clock. You were up 4-1 to one and you were feeling pretty good. 4-2 to two is a different story. Daniels, the goal scorer with it. Goes up against the boards, has it taken away by Macera. On the ice was Polak, making life tough on Macera. Polak touched it up in an offside position. Whistle goes against him. Haven't mentioned, when I was talking about new guys who look good, I also have to give a shout to Neil Skalabinski. He's looked great as well, using that six foot four frame. A lot of guys get a little gun shy when they see him coming down the barrel at him. And that just little bit of intimidation that he has could make a big difference in some of these games. It's going to be covered up for icing. So we come back down to the anchorman zone. On the ice now, Luther will skate in to take this face off. Peduto comes in for the penman. Puck is loose, taken away here, moving forwards. This is Butler. Butler on the left wing, slows up, stick handles, goes cross ice. No one was there, couldn't find the crashing, I believe, that was Peduto. Puck in behind. Pannone had it knocked away at the last second by Pacera, uh, Macera. Excuse me. Taken out there is Peduto by, I believe, on the ground. That was Bruno. So that will be a penalty on the anchor men, and this is going to be a big penalty kill this with just over, <laughs> just over 10 minutes left in the third period. Just about 11 minutes, to be more exact. So 10.32, to be exact, left in the third period. First line for Southern New Hampshire on the ice, and they want to get another goal. Anasto scored their second. Here's Jack Vonnie with it at center ice, trying to skate away from a few defenders. Has it now on the left side. Knocks it forward. Keegan gloves it, hands it down. Walsh off the boards, finds the stick of Perozo, cross ice. Couldn't find Anastos. Ferreira skating forward. 
Hands it off to Anastos. Anastos looking to keep the puck away from Mora. Mora puts the pressure on, gets the poke check. And Ferreira and Polak again make contact. And I think I this think is going to be a delayed call on yep. Ferreira. And I believe that's Mora in the corner. Had a few penmen around him. So Ferreira will go to the penalty box. That's a bad mistake. We're at four on four, a minute 17. And we four may on. also see Anastos go in as well. And yes, he does. There we go. So it's four on three hockey. Another mental mistake by Anastos. A mental mistake by Ferreira. You're down two goals. You have a power play. The last thing you want to do is give up numbers. And that's yep. what Southern New Hampshire just did. Cross-checking and hit from behind. Those are things that they could have avoided, but... Hey, it works in the Anchorman's benefit. And I think that was just Ferreira losing his cool with yeah. Polak oh, yeah. a little bit. They've been physical with each other all game. Ferreira, the bigger of the two, might have just felt like, you know what, i got to go get this little <laughs> guy. Maybe shut him up a little bit. And last laugh goes to Polak. Behind the net with it, trying to square it. Mora up top. Fakes the shot. Hands it off to Bathgate. Bathgate, loose pass, stolen away. Breaking forward is Perozo. Perozo turns Mora inside out, but then blows a tire. He's got some moves. Mora picks up the loose puck. Forward to Bathgate. Bathgate over the blue line, drops it off for Murray. Shot wide. No one there on the back side to cover up. It goes all the way into the neutral zone. Mora takes it over. Has to get away from Miner in the corner. Back up top. Can Bathgate keep it in? Nope. Back into the neutral zone. Bathgate slows things up. It's four on three. Bathgate fires. Save with the glove by Keegan. Whatever that is in Keegan's net, that black thing, they really have they to really get rid of it because I thought that shot yep. was in for a minute. There was one of those in Vinny's net earlier, and I, yep, it definitely is a puck. I think it's someone's mouthpiece that they yeah. didn't actually decide to pick up off of the ice and put back in their mouth. Face off, trying to clear that is the penman. They don't get it far in, at least into the neutral zone to relieve some of the pressure. Jack Bonney has it. Gives it off to his left. Shot from Nadiger into the chest of Keegan. And coming out of the box is Luther. There's 40 seconds left on the two penalties on Anastos and Ferreira. So a five on three situation. And if the anchorman can get a goal here, they'll be well on their way. Nadiger at the point. Gives it back off to Duquette. Duquette fires a shot into Keegan, and he covers up. You'd like to see the anchorman move the puck just a little more with the two-man advantage, get the defense moving, and find a good look. Yep. But Duquette has scored, and I've never scored a goal in my life, <laughs> so what do I know? I was just about to compliment you. You seem like you've been watching your hockey and all that kind of stuff. I like it, Jared. Taking the face off is Bathgate. Murray drops it off for Mora. Down into the corner. Bathgate has it. Back to Mora. Rotated across to Murray. Back to Mora, who's in open space. Decides to go down low to Bathgate on the red line, and that's covered up by Keegan once again. 15 seconds left on the two penalties. 8.32 left on the clock. And that saucered clear all the way to Tadino. Huber picks it up off Tadino, slows things up. Four seconds on the double penalty. Looks like both will come out in time. So the anchorman again come up empty on the power play, but they still have the two goal advantage. Hitting the ice as Huber pressure was put on by Miata. Scrum in the corner. Luther kicked it, got it onto the tape. Off the boards, Huber behind. Huber had it taken away by Miata. Under eight minutes of game left. Gloved down by Mora. Mora shimmies away from Anastos. Try to go inside to Bathgate who wanted it in the slot. 
That pass just prodded by Murray, unable to find Anastos was where the penmen were looking to go. Macera shot that was blocked down by Mora. Murray with it, he's been on the ice for a while now. Dan Daniels, who scored the fourth goal for the Anchorman, goes forward right on the blue line to Polak. Polak at the point, back to Daniels. Lost his stick to Daniels. Polak skates in though, picks up the puck, fires it across the face of goal, no one there. Again, Polak being physical, this time with Miner. Coming forward are the penmen. This is Ferreira. Excuse me, that's O'Connell. O'Connell hits the post after a great bit of skill to find some open ice. And he blows a tire with no one around him. Both extremes of it shot. O'Connell nearly had the rebound, couldn't control it and put it on frame. Southern Maine, or Southern New Hampshire, excuse me, getting closer and closer to that third goal, which would really leave us with some breathless stuff down the stretch. Miner charging forward, shot. That's blocked by Skalabinski. He felt that one. Now the shot, again, that's blocked, and that's Nadiger getting down to get in front. In some open space. Here's Bathgate. Can he make it two? Oh, he oh, tried. Man. The Tom's hurdle. It didn't work, but it was it, the skill was there. Yeah, it was there. Oh, yeah. Shot saved by Keegan. Oh. Tomash hurdle. <laughs> so you saw that goal. I, come on, <laughs> Sam. It was the exact same move. Hurdle was coming yep. uh, the other way across the net, across the face of goal. If that would have gone in, that's goal of the season. Oh yeah. <laughs> already for the anchor man. You gotta like the confidence of Bathgate to even try that. The amount of hand-eye coordination it takes to, to actually make contact with the puck the second time is outrageous. Dropped off into the slot and unable to get the good part of the blade on it was Butler. It's end-to-end -end stuff here. Now all of a sudden, puck in the neutral zone, losing his footing was Peduto. Got to catch our breath here and slow things down. This is going to be a good five minutes. Peduto, left wing, takes it to the red line, trying to square in front. Puck is still loose. Puck now with Butler. To Dino again. Not letting the penman through. That was a good look by Peduto, who tried dropping it off in the direction of Butler. Puck loose right at the point. He'll get there first. Here's Cordero. He's got men with him. He's got to keep possession of the puck and get away from the defender. Nearly found Bathgate down low. He's covered up. Down, pressure put on by Butler. Bathgate still gets it towards Cordero. Cordero's going to go up against the boards in battle with Dabana. Martinelli dumps it forwards. This is Ferreira driving forwards. One hand on his stick. Has it at the face-off circle. Was looking to square one for Dabana. Off the boards, kick down, Bathgate forwards. Puck back with Southern New Hampshire. Here's Powell wrapping around and on the ice again is Martinelli. The anchormen are selling out, laying their bodies on the line. Got to love their effort. Saucer pass. There we go to Murray's Murray. behind the defense. One on one shot. There we Score. Go. It's five that to two. Whole line now has scored their first goals of the season. Tremendous stuff. From Bathgate, Murray and Duquette, the saucer pass over the defense who was pinching forward, trying to keep the puck in the zone. And on a knee is Keegan. He knows five goals in his first game. Uh, that's not going to help your GAA. <laughs> and here's Murray one-on-one, -on -one, stick handle, Deke, send him the wrong way, and squeeze it in there inside the post. The anchorman's one-on-one -on -one opportunities this afternoon. If you take them to a shootout, they look like they know what to do in front yeah. of net. We've seen all sorts of skill from this Anchorman squad. And any question marks that this TV crew had coming into this game about what this squad was going to be this <laughs> year, they've answered some of them in the early stages of this game. They have a lot of talent. Oh, yeah. We were wondering where would the offense come from without Cody Warnock, without Alex Lyman, Seth Tobias. We present to you Andrew Bathgate, <laughs> Alex Murray, and Nathan Duquette.
guess my prediction was once again wrong. What did you say at the beginning of the game? I said it was going to be a close game, but that the anchormen were going to sink. Jersey Polak's will, Jersey Polak will go to the bench, or go to the penalty box, excuse me. And we know some of these anchormen do watch the rebroadcast <laughs> of these, so they're definitely going to be on you oh this yeah, week. Have fun with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said sorry, but, hey, they proved me wrong. That's all that matters. They've been phenomenal tonight. Have oh to, yeah. cannot give them enough credit. First period, it really looked like Southern New Hampshire was playing a different game, but Rhode Island College took the intermission, calmed things down. Yep. And we're familiar to these score lines here on Rick Hockey Fridays where they're blowing teams out and they're doing it once again, a division up, same result. We'll see as the year goes on, it's a tough schedule. Oh, yeah. But it just looks like the anchormen, they're laying more into this game than Southern New Hampshire. We've seen anchormen sprawled on the ice to block shots, charging slap shots down. Haven't really seen that level of commitment from Southern New Hampshire and now it's showing on the score line. I'm looking over at the schedule right now. The only familiar team names, they played Providence College in one game last year. They're playing St. A's though, who we opened up the season with, blew them out. And then in-state rival Roger Williams, they're moved up, joining them now in their division. So there are some familiar names, but Bridgewater State, they play all the time, but then they play a college like Merrimack, which is always ranked in the top 25. I mean, it's Main, it's crazy. Merrimack College, one of the most amazing stats in all of Division One sports. They get 90% of their student body to all of their home games, which is amazing. Now, there's only like 4,000 people at the school. It's not a huge school in North Andover, Massachusetts, but they get most of them out there to support their squad. Wow. I really love that stat. Really that love the commitment stat. by the Merrimack College student body. You won't see 90% of their student body at the club hockey game, but... No. It's a little different, but we'll just give you a quick schedule of affairs here on Rick Hockey Fridays. Yeah, we'll be with you next Friday, October 18th. 8-10 start as Providence College comes into town. So it's Rhode Island College versus Providence College. Bragging rights are on the line. <laughs> Those schools are less than a mile away from each other. They play each other in basketball. It's a little uneven there, but <laughs> a little more even should on be a little field. better on the, on the ice. Then the team will travel to St. A's. We won't have coverage of that. Then they're up at the University of Maine, and they're back home October 25th in a double in a, in a return fixture against the Black Bears. They have to go all the way up to Orono, and I'm really glad that I don't have to make that trip because that is a hike. That's You're almost in Canada at that point. Yep. And if it's cold down here in Rhode Island, I can't even imagine what the temperature would be in late October in Orono, Maine, it gets cold. That's going to be a long weekend next weekend for the guys. They have one game this weekend, then three games. A bunch of flatlanders go up to Maine. That's a term, terminology for some of you at home. People from Maine call people who are from the southern states in New England flatlanders. Cross ice, Walsh fires. That's charged down once again by Cordero. Anchorman killing another penalty. And again, blocking shots, charging down slap shots, laying their body on the line. And if there's one microcosm of this matchup right now, it's Jersey Polak going up against Ferreira. <laughs> it's been fun to watch. Tail of the tape would be in favor of Ferreira, but Polak doesn't care. <laughs> Nadiger off the boards, kept in the attacking zone. Collins, Rister, saved by Tadino, right in his chest. Two oh four left in this one. Opening game of the campaign for the Anchorman. It looks like they're on their way to a one zero and zero start. Just how you draw it up. Five goals for, two against. You like all the statistics at that point. Puck knocked down in front. Collins again had it covered. It came loose. Pucks wow. in the air. Oh my God, still loose. Trying to prod it home, and Tadino covers it up with his back. I think he's laying on it. And we, and have, we a have a penman shaking his very hurt right now on the ice. Brandon Butler had his effort saved, and we can't see who's on the ice. I don't even know what happened to him. He definitely looks to be in some serious pain, and that might be some blood on his jersey, so he might have taken a stick to the face. If they caught what, if he is bleeding and they know what Anchorman caused him, that's an 
automatic penalty for that incoming. Both trainers are out on the ice. They're looking at him. You're really hoping he didn't catch a skate because there were bodies flying around. I think this is Ryan Houston on the ice. even really tell where they're looking what they're looking at Looks like he's grabbing in his like shoulder area. Yeah. I wonder if it popped out. Might be, yeah. Something that's could I don't be know. A, yeah. He just pointed to his shoulder, so he might have might have knocked that out of his socket, and that is a that's tough, painful, painful injury. And once it happens once, your probability of it happening again increases. Oh yeah. So he's still being tended to down on the ice. Now they, they've got him up, and yeah, that's definitely that right shoulder. One of the captains on this squad, Ryan Houston, being looked at. It's definitely either that. I'm, I'm thinking yeah, it's I'm a thinking dislocated it's shoulder. Could be a clavicle. Hasn't moved that right arm. No. Very gingerly leaving the ice is Ryan Houston. But it's going to be tough to get that equipment off, especially Ooh. if you're not able to raise that yeah. arm. I've heard in cases they just kind of have to cut it. You almost, yeah, ha they you might. almost have no choice. They might. So he's going to go right to the locker room. Andrew Anastos leading the way. Last thing you want to see at the very end of the oh game is a guy get hurt. Especially that badly. Ugh. I believe the Rhode Island College athletic trainers in the in yep. the locker room looking at him. So we'll reset things with a minute 50 left in the game. Anchorman still killing off a penalty. Southern New Hampshire would need a flurry at the end of this game to somehow salvage something. Cross-ice pass, and that's intercepted. Getting a stick on it was Bathgate. Skating around with it is Peduto in front. Butler couldn't redirect it on target. Coming out of the box is Polak. And holding his wrist is number 19, Paul Parizo. Paul Perozo, excuse me. I just want to know what's going through the Southern New Hampshire coaches' heads right now. He'll head to the bench. He's grabbing his elbow. Minute 28, five on five hockey, probably for the rest of the way. Could see another penalty, but. We hope. Mora with it, backhands it. Walsh into the corner. Mora picks up the puck, takes it behind. Pressure put on. Poke checked away. That was O'Connell. Anastos in the corner, scrumming with Mora. Down on his knees is Mora. Gets it away to another anchorman. And we're going to get a whistle. Possession goes back to Rick. Or excuse me, possession. It's going to be a face-off in Southern New Hampshire's attacking zone. Anastos wins the draw. Knocked it behind. Kept in by Miner. Around the boards. 60 seconds left in this game. 
Miner takes it over the center circle, skates away from the stick of Duquette, drops it off at the point, Walsh. Shot comes in, that's high and wide from Collins. Still loose. Puck covered up by Tadino, who's way out of his crease. Got the glove on it, 43 seconds. Line change for both squads. Jack Vonnie and taking the face off for Southern New Hampshire is Kevin Peduto. We haven't seen anyone kicked out of the face off circle today, which is always rare. We usually see that a lot. Hasn't happened this afternoon. Everyone's been a little more disciplined. Southern New Hampshire has pulled their goalie onto the stick of Anastos. Puck loose at the center circle. Bursting forward here is Collins. Collins couldn't get away from Martinelli. Going to get another whistle. And I think the goalie's going to have to come back onto the ice for Southern New Hampshire. Yep. yep. Finally coming back out as there's going to be a face-off in his zone. So Keegan will come back on. As soon as they clear it out of this zone, he'll trot come off. Back off. Trying to saucer it clear only as far as Nadiger right outside the blue line. Tried to chop it forward, missed it. Jack Vonnie has it. Pressure put on, slicing through here. Here comes Anastos. Keegan heads to the bench. Anastos tries to split the defense. Tadino's out. He's in no man's land now. Slap shot, misses wide. Tadino lost his stick, and that's that. Final whistle goes, and the anchormen were knotted up at one apiece heading into the third period. They got four goals. Southern New Hampshire got one. Final score is 5-2. to two. As we see the celebrations of the anchormen, they crowd around Vinny Tadino to celebrate. They're 1-0 on the year. And they'll, they'll slap some hands. They'll, they'll congratulate Southern New Hampshire. But at the end of the day, Rick gets the win, 5-2. to two. And we'll see a post-game interview with our player of the game, Vinny Tadino, with our player of the game behind the camera, Sam Allen. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone here at Anchor TV behind the scenes. They did a tremendous job. John Kamisiak on the penalty cam cam. We got Steven Artillas. He's working the main camera. He's done a great job. This is his first time working camera. Tom Lima, veteran leader, director, as always. Sam Mandeville making her first appearance up in the box, working the graphics. And Rob Santuri, he's done a little bit of everything, a jack of all trades. He's making one of many appearances here on Rick Hockey Friday. I'm Jared Ware. We're about to send it down to the ice level to Sam Allen, who has an interview with our player of the game, Vinny Tadino. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. And we'll be back next Friday here at the Dennis M. Lynch Arena as it's Crosstown Rivalry Town time. And you know what? We'll throw it out on Twitter or or uh, whatever social media we like. We need a rivalry between Rick. We need a fun name between Rick and Providence College. So if you got a good one, hit us up on Twitter, at Anchor TV. Let's send it down to the ice. Sam Allen with our player of the game, Vinny Tadino. Sam, take it away. Is that it? Oh, it's going to be Mark. Sam Allen down here on ice level with Rick's starting goaltender, Vinny Tadino. It definitely seems like your team's cheering for you. You did phenomenal in goal today. What was going through your head that you made some amazing saves? Well, uh, I just wanted to keep the team in it, you know. Uh, we started off kind of slow, but I just helped them stay in it, made a few saves, gained uh, the energy back, and then uh, we put a few in. Now, you're lucky. You have a lot of vet defensemen in front of you, but pretty much it's all new offensive players. What was your feel going into this season? New division, a lot of new faces. What was your opinion? Well, we got a lot of good players on our team. It's just uh, going to take a matter of time of clicking. So I knew that we had a good core. Uh, first game is the way the jitters, and uh, they need to get uh, better with each other playing, passing-wise, uh, playing the puck, and everything like that. But we got a good core, so. All right, well, there you have it, folks. Thank you so much, Vinny. Congratulations on the first win of the season today. I'm Sam Allen. For everybody else from Anchor TV, 
John, Sam, Rob, Justin, Tom, and Jared Ware. I'm Sam Allen, and that's another presentation of Rick Hockey Fridays. <laughs>